the clock strikes eight, I will be controlled, never, never late. With a nice cup of tea, a little run of coat, the sporting leg and the winning coat. I get so nice and tidy, then I toddle off to work. I do the best I can. Still, I'm only a doing what a bloke should do, cause I'm only a working man. Now, let me get this straight. You walked out of the job because they promised you a month's holiday with pay? Yes, and now they turn around and tell me I'm only getting four weeks. But four weeks is a month. Not in July, don't. It's 31 days. Well, so what? In February, it's 28 days. Oh, I'm not going on my holidays in February. Have you ever been to the south of France in February? The south of France? A month's holiday with pay? Do you know what you're talking about? You don't know how lucky you are. A hundred years ago, a man was lucky if he got a month's work in a year. And then he had to work 18 hours a day and was lucky if he could afford to buy a loaf of bread. And you come in here talking to me about holidays in the south of France? Get back to work and thank count your blessings. I will and all, mate. No thanks to you. Get out! And remember, it's the likes of us what pays your wages. Get out of it! Get out of it! <laughs> <laughs> well, what's up with you? Didn't they put enough sugar in your tea? No, they did not. No, they did not. <laughs> Is that right? Are you telling me you left the job because they didn't put enough sugar in your tea? Well, it's not right, is it? They said we'd get the sugar bowls on the trolley and they'd put it in the urn. And they didn't put in enough for you? <laughs> oh, it wasn't too bad, really. For it's a principle of the thing. I was thinking of the blokes that don't take sugar in their tea. Well, why aren't they round here complaining then? They get their tea out of another urn with no sugar in it. <laughs> You poor dears. I don't know how you bear it. It wasn't so long ago that if a man asked for a drink of water on the job, he got the sack. A hundred years ago, if a governor smiled at a workman, that was his Christmas bonus. The only recognition he got was a thump in the ear from the foreman, and the only freedom he had was the freedom to sit round a cold fireplace with his loved ones and weep into an empty stew pot. <laughs> you coming here talking to me about sugar in your tea? Get out of my sight! What are you talking about? Look here, I can do a day's work with the best of them. How do you know? You've never done a day's work in your life. Now get out of it! <laughs> getting sick and tired of it. The more they get, the more they want. <laughs> <laughs> and here we have the king of the wall. <laughs> Greetings, Hercules. <laughs> have you completed your task for the day? Or have you again, in some strange manner, offended the illustrious ones on Mount Olympus? Speak, O oh mighty warrior. <laughs> Song of birds. As little Tom marched steadfastly across the gloomy courtyard into the counting house. Inside the darkness hung over him like a pale. When out of a shadowed recess loomed a most imposing figure in a green plush surcoat and breeches to match. He peered down from the mountain crest of his high top hat and boomed in a voice of thunder. And home might you be. I'm Thomas Tappetit. <laughs> if it please you, sir, come for the job of a new apprentice. Quavered our hero. Trim, 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 madam. <laughs> Tremulously. Tremulously. <laughs> Thomas Tappetit? Such a big name for a little fellow. I shall call you Little Tom, and you will call me Pondicherry. <laughs> <laughs> Come, warm yourself by the fire and meet the rest of your colleagues. Our chief clerk, my son Albert, 
our assistant chief clerk, my nephew Jonathan, and our head bookkeeper, my good lady, Mrs. Pondicherry. Mrs. Pondicherry clasped little Tom to her ample bosom. <laughs> Tom gasped at the warmth of her welcome. Oh. <laughs> and blushingly freed himself from her embrace. He turned to Pondicherry with a tear in his eye. <laughs> Beg pardon, sir, but I've never had a mother before, nor a father, neither. <laughs> you poor little... <laughs> fellow. Cried nephew Jonathan, giving Tom a pinch of snuff and a quick rub down with a pitcher of Queen Victoria. <laughs> Upon which ponder Sherry's daughter, the lucky... Lev... Lascivious. Lascivious. Arabella enters, carrying a steaming bowl of arrowroot. Tom gazed at Arabella, and something stirred within him he knew not what, but he was soon to find out. <laughs> A toast, cried Pondicherry, to little Tom, our new colleague, our new brother, our new son. The bowls clinked merrily together, and far into the night their merriment echoed round the dusty ledges of the counting house. Cherry ripe, cherry ripe, <laughs> ripe, 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 ripe. All and fair ones come and... <laughs> no, 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 no. The end. What's that all about? Little Tom. <laughs> Who's Little Tom? I don't know, but I wish I was him. What are you talking about? Me being Little Tom, Mr. Pooh. Pew. <laughs> Pew. Pew. All right. Pew. Pew. <laughs> what happened? I want to be welcomed into the bosom of a lovely family business. What happened? I want the boss to loom out of the shadows and say, Welcome, little Tom. What happened? I want to gaze into his daughter's eyes, the la la lascivious. Lascivious. <laughs> lascivious Arabella, and feel something stir within me, what has never stirred before, but with any kind of luck and a couple of pints of arrowroot, it would be all. <laughs> what happened? I feel the bowls clink merrily together and the jolly meant to go right through the night when I need up mother brown. <laughs> <laughs> I'm another cherry ripe, cherry ripe. For the last time, what happened? I didn't put any sugar in the tea. <laughs> then why didn't you get your tea out of the other urn? I couldn't. The bloke you chucked out drunk it all. <laughs> What's up? Whatever, Jack. <laughs> You've gone all tremulous to this. Go on, pop it. Get out of my sight. Just a minute. So just a minute, me. Go home. Go home. You don't know what you're saying, Mr. Pooh. 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 Have you seen my aunt? It's worse than sending me to work. I don't sit round an empty stew pot. I live in one. <laughs> I shared it with an out-of-work shop steward. <laughs> The walls are papered with socialist election manifestos. There's a pile of banners in one corner that says, We are not wildcats, and just opposite there's another pile. I know yet you are. <laughs> the bookshelves are full of the life story of Karl Marx. He's got 48 different versions of it, including one by Eni Blyton. <laughs> you laugh on every page. He's got a gramophone with 76 different recordings of the red flag. He's even got Quinton Ogg singing it. 
sneak out here out of a jeweled brown Toby jug. There's a bust of Harold Wilson as a doorstep, and underneath the bed there's a life-size effigy of Frank Cousins. <laughs> it's like living inside George Woodcock's wallet. <laughs> so if you can find me a little family business that need a little Tom, I'll be very grateful. Here you are, Bullock and Sons. Get yourself round there. Bullock. <laughs> Thank you and goodbye forever. And if you muck this one up, don't come back here, little Tom, or I'll send you to the vet. <laughs> Sir, if it please you, sir. I'm Charles Drake, casual labourer of Weybridge, cup on a job and a vacancy, if it please you, sir. Oh, well, you'd better come in. Oh, thank you, sir. It is a little cold, isn't it? <laughs> Good morning, sir, if it please you, sir. You must be the son. As a matter of fact, I'm the nephew. Oh, 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 we'll have a pinch of snuff later, eh? <laughs> <laughs> What's the meaning of this? Who is this person? Uh, I'm Charles Street, casual labourer of Weybridge, uh, come for the job at a vacancy if it please you. Mommy! <laughs> <laughs> uh, is this true, George? Are you considering bringing an outsider into the firm? Really, Uncle George, this is monstrous. You know perfectly well we only hire members of the family. We've run out of members of the family and we're a man short on the floor. But you've no right to do this without discussing it with the family. All 278 of them! Oh, keep your voice down. It'll be all over the factory if you're not careful. Father, what's all this nonsense about hiring an outsider? How the hell did you know about it? It's all over the factory floor. It's pandemonium out there. Really, Dad, it's just not on. He's quite right, George. Absolutely. I keep trying to tell you, we've run out of... As you wear a man short on the floor, we can't employ another member of the family because they're all working here already. Well, how about our Nellie's son? She only had him yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Close the factory down until he's old enough. Don't talk like a damn fool. How dare you talk to Mother like that? I'll talk to your Mother how I damn well please. Now, steady on, Uncle George. Shut up! I am still managing director of this firm. And I own 25% of the shares. And Grandfather's still head of the family and he owns 51% of the shares. Grandfather is 104 years old. 104 or not, he'd soon have you back on the floor if he knew what you were up to. And the reason he founded this firm was so that we could always work together like one big happy family. Uh, Mummy. You shut! And I am not your mother. I'm glad I know, Missy. <laughs> if you were, I'll be part of this lot. I shouldn't have climbed back into George Woodcock's wallet. <laughs> I'll come here with the birds are twittering and Mr. Bullock looming out of the shadows. Expecting to be welcomed into the bosom of a loving family with a warmth and a wealth and the cordiality. Instead of that, it's all kit and bullock and bullet. <laughs> There's no way to treat a little Tom. Little Tom? Little Tom? <laughs> it can't be. So if it please you, sir, I'll be off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, wait. Ah, please. Uh, do uh, come uh, and sit down. <laughs> Realize what this means if it's true. Well, it could mean the end of everything. You don't know for sure. What is it, the name? Little Tom. Excuse me, would you mind telling us how old you are? 39, if it please you, sir. <laughs> Age is right. It's him, it's him, it must be him. Well, let's kick him out. We can't do that, he'll only come back. Or go to the old man. That'll be that. No, we'll keep him here for the present. When he leaves, we'll fix it so that he leaves for good. <laughs> Welcome to the family, little Tom. Thank you, sir. If it please you, sir. Call me Henry. Little Tom? Henry. 
Uh, good to have you with us, little Tom. <laughs> you little darling. Little Tom. <laughs> I beg pardon, sir, but you see, I've never had a mother before, nor a father, neither. You poor little... Gee up, Daddy! <laughs> <laughs> you feel something stirring within you, what you know not of, what might happen a little later? <laughs> You're talking to you, nasty, hairy little man. Muriel, it's little Tom. All settled in. You're quite clear what you have to do? Right. Give me your watches. <coughs> this will be him. Oh, dear. Steady, mother. Oh. Come in, little Tom. Good morning, sir, if you please you, sir. Hello, Brother Henry. <laughs> Hello, nephew Paul. How about a snitch of puffing? <laughs> Art are you? Tom, there are one or two formalities to be gone into. Now, first of all, I do. It's a bit stuffy in here this morning. Yes, it is close. <laughs> Quite muggy. Damn stifling. Would you mind opening the window, little Tom? Of course not, sir. If it please you, sir. <laughs> not that one, little Tom. Uh, ah! <laughs> this one? Yes. <laughs> How's that, sir, if it please you, sir? That's grand, little Tom. <laughs> I'm sure we'll all feel much better in a moment or two. <laughs> well, then, <clears throat> I wonder if we'd mind just... Signing this? Oh, not at all, sir, to please you, sir. What are they? Life insurance policies. For me? How very kind. <laughs> it's the least we can do, Tom. You mean a great deal to us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, done, sir, if it please you, sir. Well, that's that. I think it's just about time for elevenses. Heavens, I seem to have left my watch at home. So have I. Me too. And me. I wonder if you'd mind, little Tom. There's a clock down the street. Not at all, sir, if it please you, sir. Oh, little Tom, uh, you can see it if you lean out of the window. It's on this side of the road, little Tom. <laughs> Just about the undertakers. Give me a clock down the hall. It's Scott! <laughs> I'd have made a mine in the army could tell the time by an ingrowing toenail. <laughs> Went to a chiropodist and got shot for being late on parade. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little joke, sir, if it please you, sir. The time, little Tom, the time! Ah! <laughs> oh, I mean, that snuff's strong, isn't it? <laughs> Little Tom, 
Will you please tell us the time? Eleven o'clock. Oh. <laughs> so it's settled then. You're all quite clear what you have to do. Is the ottoman in the right position for you, Mother? Uh, yes, dear. And your line is? Oh, try the inside of the back of the clock on the mantelpiece, little Tom. Oh. Henry, you have the mouse. Put it in the cigarette box. Yes, Father. <laughs> oh, you have the screwdriver? Right. Cigarette cases. Aren't you, dear? Yes. Perhaps a cigarette would help. Oh, yes, a cigarette. I would love a cigarette. Oh, dear, I seem to have run out. By golly, so have I. I'm afraid I only smoke cigars. Little Tom, would you mind? I never touch them. They stump me growth. <laughs> box, the box. what you have to do. Mother, give me your line. Oh, look, little Tom has got one. <laughs> Henry, we have the battery shaver. Paul, you know the telephone number. Langham 1129. Right. Passports. <laughs> That'll be him. Oh, dear. Steady, Mother. Come in, little Tom. Well, <laughs> <laughs> little 
Tom, how did it go? I, I got them all, sir. I got my topi and my frogman's flippers and my green duck with a green spot and a camera to record it all for posterity and I've torn a picture out of my passport. Well done, little Tom. You must be tired. Sit down. Now, about this Bakerfield contract... Excuse me, Uncle George. I have to make a telephone call. Hello? It's Cairo on the line. Right. I'll see to it straight away. <laughs> Something up, Uncle George? Trouble at our Cairo branch. One of us must go there immediately. Well, I can't go. I've lost my passport. So have I. Mine's gone too. What about you, little Tom? I've got me topi and me frogman's flippers and me green duck with the yellow covering and I've got the camera to record it all for posterity. You told me to tear the picture out of me passport. What a damn fool I was. We can get some more taken. That'll take 24 hours. We could take them ourselves. We haven't got a camera. Oh, look, little Tom has got one. <laughs> <laughs> What would we do without you, little Tom? <laughs> that will do very nicely. Teddy! What's the birdie? Steady! Jack a minute! <laughs> you can't do this to me. I never had a shave this morning. I shall come out all stubbly. <laughs> What's the birdie? Steady! Jack a minute! <laughs> How about one on the desk? This is a bit too kinky, but... <laughs> Let's try one leaning against the wall nonchalant. James Bond. <laughs> Come one step near and I shall paint your body all gold. <laughs> it's lovely to be in a creative medium. Let's try one recumbent. <laughs> Perhaps not, it's a little reminiscent. <laughs> We don't want to upset Cecil Beaton, do we? <laughs> Amazing, you know, a picture looks so simple when one has no association with the creation. I shall never laugh at Picasso again. <laughs> I know. Let's have one immediately. <laughs> no. That's been done. We'll tell them the truth. The Statue of Liberty. Royal Britannia! Settled, and you're all quite clear what you have to do. That'll be him. Oh, dear. Steady, Mother. <laughs> Come in, little Tom. <laughs> little Tom, we have decided to tell you the truth. Oh, thank you, sir. I, I think it's very nearly time we got to the bottom of things. <laughs> 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 Begging your pardon, sir. Many years ago, the time is immaterial. Our grandfather's younger brother, Lancelot, was posted to the town of Randipore in the Kashmiri foothills. Normally a celibate man, and much given to communing with himself. Tea up, Daddy! Thank you, dear. It's not for you. It's for little Tom. <laughs> <laughs> it's stirred, isn't it? That hand shall burn in never quenching fire, but staggers thus my person. 
Exton, thy fierce hand hath with the king's blood stained the king's own land. Mount, mount, my soul, thy seat is up on high, whilst my gross flesh sinks downward here to die. That hand shall burn in never quenching fire that staggers thus my person. Exton, thy fierce hand hath with the king's blood stained the king's own land. Mount, mount, my soul, thy seat is up on high, whilst my gross flesh sinks downwards here to die. Ma sciondele morte. <laughs> mount, mount, my soul, my seat is up on high, whilst my gross flesh sinks downwards here to die. What happened? I never put any sugar in the tea. <laughs> <laughs>